you. Oh. Oof. All right, we've come to get some more stuff out of Gladys. Oh, I've been rotten since we got back. Get on a downer anyway, didn't you? Because you come back. Plus all the stinky, smoggy Essex here. And we've done so much. I'll show you the flipping house. Oh. Got in yesterday. Dragged everything out of the van. Uh, oh my God, there's flipping bikes in here. There's a big pile of washing over there. There's all gear dumped here. Raven's been playing with his flipping toys. Oh. It's what happens when you go away enjoying yourself, isn't it? It's just stuff everywhere. So we come out today, get some stuff out Gladys, refreshing her up, washing everything in there. And we're going to take you to a place we affectionately known as Ladybird Land on the way home. Absolutely beautiful there. We're going to go and see what we can see. But this time of year it should be full of bluebells. It's absolutely stunning. So I hope you enjoy that. And then on the way home, I'm going to go and treat myself. Cheer myself up a bit. But oh, really bad tummy. My neck feels like someone's hit me on the back of the head with a cricket bat. You know that right at the top? Don't know what's happening now. It's probably sleeping in a normal bed. I'm used to this one. But well, we're going to get everything out of the van now and take you off on a little trip to get back into things, eh? Hey? So I'll see you in a minute. We've arrived at Little Wally Hall Place. It's lovely. I've just seen one of my dear friends, Ian Plume, who's just, uh, I've pulled up and he's just getting out of his car. Oh, let's get out of here, because we're bleeping. He's just got out of his car with a couple of his chums. But it's beautiful over here. It's like a little oasis. Let's get this camera out. And we're just gonna go and have a walk around and show you about. It's a Essex Wildlife Trust place. This is the car park, so it's a fairly big car park, no overnight parking in here. And they lock the gates and open the gates at certain times, dawn and dusk. But all the daff, when the, um, earlier on, the daffodils here are absolutely amazing. We left the dog indoors, this is not a dog friendly place. So if you hear a bing -a ling noise, that's Raven mooching around indoors. But over the back, there are loads of bluebells. But this field, I don't know if you can see, is absolutely full of daffodils. And that field over there is absolutely full of daffodils. It's beautiful here. But um, I'm going to go and give you a, a show round, give you a bit of history on the place, because I've been coming here since, I don't know, I've been coming here for a, at least 30 odd years. I know I don't look that, look that old, do I? We're going to leave the car here and have a mooch. So this is the approach road, it just looks like there's a big rambling, ramblers association or something like that all gone. But this is where we are, Wally Place Nature Reserve. And there's a bit of info on it. But this Ellen Ann Wilmot planted it right out in the Victorian ages, but over here there is a plethora of different plants, wild garlic, all sorts of, they've got celadine, loads and loads of stuff over here. It's really interesting for a walk. And it's free to come in. You can leave a, uh, a donation. I usually stick something in there. But there's all talks and stuff. You can scan that. I'm gonna have to turn my phone off in a minute because Raven's walking around. Okay, but no, no dogs allowed in here. But it is absolutely stunning over here. I mean, can you imagine what this is like when all the daffodils come out? Sadly, we missed the daffodils, but all this is a carpet of beautiful yellow daffodils and some of these trees. I mean, look at that. It's stunning over here. 
So I've, there's lots of these posts everywhere around the site. So what I'll do is I'll just hold it steady on the camera so you can you can pause and have a read of these because they're really interesting. I want to talk about different things as well. What have we got there? There's a comma, butterfly, right there. Wow, beautiful, happy flipping days. Right, let's have a look around, eh? So as you're coming through the gate, there's a wee pond here. I don't know if you can see them yellow flowers, but they're marsh marigolds, they are. But just over the back there is a little hide. We're going to pop in there and have a look. And in front of the hide, on the edge of the water there, there's a, a bird feeder. So your mate Ian's gone in there because he's a bit poorly at the moment. Oh, I've just seen a brimstone butterfly. All the butterflies are coming out. Look, see that yellow butterfly? That's a brimstone. One of the first butterflies you'll see, bright yellow, you can't miss it. But yeah, very pretty. I'm gonna see if I can get some photographs. <laughs> A lot of Spanish bluebells over here. They're the ones that sprout out like that, rather than our native that all go from one side of the stem. So they hybridise and knack our, knack our native species up and take over the place. But there we go. This is basically a botanical garden anyway. There's a beautiful yew tree here, very poisonous. Lords and ladies, the air room coming up. Foxglove. Yellow rattle. And that in there is a badger set. God knows how long that's been there for. Some little birdies here. So I'll see if I can get some shots as we're walking past. The place is full of robins. Really good for birding too. As I say, I've just seen three of my mates. Ooh, is that sparrow? Three of my mates that's just come down here. And also a chap that's just walked out, he's a birdo, he's got a pair of binoculars and a camera around his neck. So you get quite a few different species here. Typical woodland stuff, you get the buzzards, you also get uh, gold crests. I think there's been fire crests seen here. But it's an incredible place. This woman basically sculpted this part of the landscape for a uh, a botanical enjoyment. Now this bit here, you see all these rocks and that. Yeah, that's where the badger's earths are. You can see, massive. But these rocks here, this used to be under cover as far as I can remember. And this was all planted out to ferns. I think you can still see a bit of the structure over there. See that beam? But this was all under cover, all glass covered, like a galosh. And she had this planted with all different ferns from all around the world. What a spectacular place. Let's have a look, what's this here? Alpine gold, there you go. Our iron girders. So the girders held a thick glass of the roof of the filmy firm cave, which was built to house exotic translucent ferns from New Zealand and elsewhere. Oh, there's a little spot, but this is beautiful. It's in Brentwood, just on the edge of Brentwood, a place called Wally, hence the name of the place. But that was the headquarters for Falls back in the day. It's a bit windy, as you can see behind me. So, I hope she's coming out. I've got my mic on. I had a couple of problems with this a little while ago, but I think I've fixed it now. Lost a bit of audio. Uh, it's lovely to be back over here. It's a really nice place. So if you're local, it's not too far off the M25, Essex side, as if you're going to go to Wally Brentwood. It's the first turning off the M25, actually, that takes you into Brentwood. It's just down there. You've got a pub on the corner that does really nice food. But it's a really nice day out. It's two hides here. I'll take you to show you the hides. I won't show you in the first one, because I think the lads are in there, sitting in there doing some photography, so I'll keep quiet in now. But I'll show you around. So much coming out now. Hawthorn, got the holly.
elder. It's home beam. This is home beam here. So many different types of plants. And being an arboretum and botanical garden, obviously there's lots of foreign plants around here, so I've got to keep me sort of wits about me to what I'm finding. But over the back there, there's an owl box on that tree as well. Sometimes you get a barn owl through here. But I'll show you this field here, look. Look how many daffodils are in there. Can you imagine when that was all out? That is completely covered in daffs. So a month, three weeks ago, that would have been absolutely smothered in yellow daffodils. Beautiful. Right, let's have a little walk up here, see what we can see. So this is the first hide here. And Ian and Chums are just putting some bird food down there. Filling their feeders up and that. That's a nice little hide there with the pond in front of it. I won't go in there. We'll have a walk around, I think. But you used to be able to walk all the way around here, you can't now. Absolutely stunning. Sammy's got her R7 today with her macro lens on. So if she gets any macro shots, I'll stick those up for you. That'll be nice. But I'm going to head round that way now and see what's down there. So we just had a chat to the lads in the hide. Just getting set up really. Having a look around, see what's about. They've just told me that the fire crest and the gold crest have been spotted down the bottom here. But I'll spin you around so you ain't got to look at my ugly mug. So you can see what's all about. Cherry blossom out, lovely white cherry blossom there, look at that. You've got a better view of that daffodil field there now, look at that. And there's a visitor centre, well not so much a visitor centre, up the way here there's like, um, it's like a shed with a load of information in basically. So I'll take you in there and go through a few bits in there. What have we got here? Whole, whole moak, that's a whole moak there. Look at that, that's a tree and a half, what a gnarly tree. And they leave a lot of this around, obviously they've got to make it safe, but they leave all this for the wildlife. This is all for the wildlife over here. But this is like a little rubber sweet chestnuts. But look at that. Now this is a good place to come to see the tree creepers, because the tree creepers, a lot of this bark has got like gnarly bits on it and gaps underneath it. And the old tree creepers love getting under there and nesting. Oh, there's a little squirrel up there. Oh, this is a beautiful spot. What have we got here? Now all the posts around here, as I said, got different numbers on. Read that. Different numbers and different information on. And there's all these old structures everywhere. You can imagine this was a big country garden at one point. So all these little follies and houses and little bits and pieces everywhere. Now the actual, the actual house, if you like, is gone now. But there's lots of seats around here. It's a beautiful place to come around, especially if you're bad on your pins, bad on your legs, because there's seats everywhere. However, there are some steps. I think I can hear a nut hatch. But here we go, look. Here we go. It's steeped with history here. I like putting these little signs in for you to have a read. I mean, I know, they're, I know they're small, but if you pause it and zoom in, you can read all this. You can imagine what this was like back in the day. This little bit here sitting here. A right little sun trap. So we're going to go down. And there's a walled garden now. I'll take you into the walled garden. That's beautiful in there in the summertime when all the flowers are out. 
But this is pretty much the only steps that you're going to come in contact with, apart from the ones we've, where we first come in. Obviously, you've got some up to this building. But you just have to be a bit careful. It's a bit slippery. I'll keep rolling because some of you will probably fall over. Don't fall over. bothered. <laughs> Lovely. And as I said, there's another seat here. Black currants in there. But in the middle, there's all these like areas that you're not allowed on. You can come and volunteer over here. They love a volunteer. Some of these middle areas you're not allowed on, it's just left for the wildlife. But yeah, fantastic place. I haven't been over here for ages. And there's the north side. Go and have a look in here. See what we can see. Oh, it's getting a bit windy outside. You can see the little squirrels are down there making the most of the food. They have these bird feeders in front here. And you've got this lovely little pond in the middle. You usually get waterfowl on there. Man, it's like a baby school down there. On the edge of that log. And it's a youngster. I'm going to spend a few minutes in here, see if I can get some shots. This is the hide. It's only like a corrugated, that pitch corrugated stuff. No smoking. I'll shut the door. Let's see if we can see any birds. Nice in there, just had a couple of minutes. Got a nut hatch, great tip, blue tip, robin. A couple of squirrels come really close. I like seeing the hide. It's nice and peaceful sometimes. But we're gonna walk through the loop now. It's like a circuit, you can walk all the way around the outside. This here where these bamboos are is where you usually see the gold crests. They like getting into that bamboo. So if you come over here and you want to do some photography and you want to see the gold crests, this is a good spot. It's just behind the hide, just around this area, because you've got a lot of evergreen trees, holly, and this bamboo that they get in and out of. So you just have to stand here and listen for the really high pitch calls, and then you'll see them. But you get monk jack deer over here as well. Lots of monk jack deer. Badgers, as, as I showed you earlier. And also foxes get over here, a lot of foxes. But it's like a little oasis, really. Nice place to come for a few hours. I usually shoot over here, have a couple of hours over here, and then go. But in the, in the summertime, when it warms up, brilliant over here for macro photography. There's loads of different types of insects that get over here. And me and Sammy called it Lady Birdland. We come over here once 
and we must have seen near enough every species of ladybird that you've got in the UK and thousands of them. Absolutely thousands and thousands and thousands of ladybirds. So yeah, really nice. Are well, we going to walk around the edge there and take you over on the backfield? Oh, it smells nice here. Lovely. Got all these rhododendron flowers out here. And they Bye bye. This little boy there was just talking to us, bless his heart. And that's the that's the daffodil field there. But you get buzzards in here as well. You have to keep right for the buzzards. I've actually seen rabbits hanging out of the tree where they've caught a rabbit and sat up there and fed on it. It's a little bit muddy over here, but it's been really wet, really rainy. But this bit here, if memory serves me correctly, used to be a boating lake. So see these walls here and the, the beam going, the rod going around the edge. This would have all been full of water and a big boating pond where the gentry could come and boat on the lake. How cool is that? And there you go. I'm right. How good aren't I? So an old boating lake, but now it's full of this wild garlic. See these wild garlic plants coming up here? These flowers are ramsons or wild garlic. Really good to eat. You can eat the leaves, you can eat the bulbs, you can eat the whole plant. And next to it, we've got cleavers, goose grass, or sticky willy as some people call it. But you have to be really careful because in amongst this lot are other arums, other plants, such as lords and ladies, and the young leaves look very similar. So you really have to be careful when you're foraging this time of year. Make sure you know what you're looking for. But yeah, can you imagine this when this was a boating lake? Calls that. Really nice. Bearing in mind this place is 10, 15 minutes from the M25. Not these old trees. It's like an old London plane, that one. Really nice. Lots of insects out today. It's warmed up a little bit. I don't know if Sammy's got any photographs yet. But we're gonna have a mooch around here, but take you around here, and I've got another couple of places I wanna take you. If not two places, one place. And you're gonna like that. But these flowers, oh, here are these rhododendrons. They smell beautiful. Nice early source of nectar for flying insects, such as bees. Oh, sorry. It's only taking a photograph of a shield bug. She'll be there all day. She's got more patience than me. down this nut walk now we usually go that way which takes us up the top and around the top of this this meadow here where them couple of people are sitting but the last time we come here this wasn't open this is a relatively new little walk around here I think but you can sit up there rest your feet there's birds everywhere here. They're flying around busying themselves. There she is again. She will sit there with her camera and her macro lens. And I'll turn around and she's about three miles behind me where she's still taking a picture of the same ladybird. Go down this walk a bit further. 
That's the hide I was just sitting in. And there's the pond. And they've always got work parties over here, you can get involved. During the week it's quite quiet, what is it? It's Thursday today. Thought I'd get this video out of the way because we got a yet another storm coming to us this weekend with a name. What's going on? Why are there all these storms with names popping up all the flipping time? And you know I hate wind, didn't you? I've just told you a porky pie. I said this wasn't open before, but this has been here for quite some time, this path. However, it's not been as well maintained as this, if I remember rightly. So I remember coming up here. We've cut a lot of this ash down. As I said, they leave it all behind for the bugs. All the brush, and leave all that. Make the log poles up. Really nice, but that path goes round the back there, where then people are sitting, and then comes back round here to this top bit, this walled garden. Now, I'm pretty sure you used to be able to get over here. It looks like they're doing a bit of renovation here. But I'm pretty sure you used to be able to get over there. There's a lot of planters and stuff like that. And they used to grow vegetables in. I'm going to get into this walled garden and show you in there. As I say, it's not too bad over here. It's not greatly wheelchair friendly. Not many steps, but there's a lot of slopes. Just there is those Spanish chestnuts that we come past. And we've done like the loop down the bottom past the hide. And you come up back up to this bit. But as I say, they're constantly doing work here. Look like they've put some composters here. There's squirrels everywhere here. And they're doing some planting, some wallflowers in there. But in there, is a real sun trap. It's really quite pretty. Now you've got this like seating area here. It used to be a seating area, but it's got a bit dilapidated now. They're probably going to renovate that where they are. They've got a couple of acros in there underneath an archway. But this will probably be renovated. Lovely old building. And now I'll take you into the wall gardens. Lovely. Beautiful magnolia trees. There's a white one. There's a pink one. I've got one the same as that in my front garden. This is the wall garden. Whew. What's this? I think this is tri-cornered leek. This is tri-cornered leek. Another heady plant. Smells like spring onions, but it's got a triangular shaped stem. Oh yeah, it smells lovely. But that looks like all tri-cornered leek all through there. There's a crow over the back having a peck. Cool, you can really smell them, like spring onion smell. Beautiful. But in the summertime, this is absolutely gleaming with butterflies, plants, all the flowers come out. Really nice, and because this place is walled, you don't get that wind come through here. And here is the information room I was telling you about. Let's take you in here. Just say it's just like a shed. But in here are all the details of all the place. There we go. They can always volunteer over here. There's all the birds and wildlife you can see.
as I say, there's lots of beautiful rhododendrons over here, lots of different types. And these are some before and after photographs. And this is the old house. I'll show you what it used to look like. It's amazing what it used to look like. Absolutely amazing. Now this is what it used to look like. And there, look at that. Huge house. And here it is. It's an artist rendition of what it used to look like. Look at that. All these gardens everywhere, vegetable plots. And it used to be just all countryside around here. Now this is all Brentwood. That over there is London. Yeah, so that's what it used to look like. Absolutely beautiful. Really stunning. As I say, they're always clearing stuff out and renovating stuff. So that's the walled garden. Sammy taking some pictures of some more bugs. But the smell of wild garlic and these tri-cornered leeks everywhere is absolutely amazing. Really nice. I think that's called Vincent, that plant, the purple one. Really invasive. And you can see it's flipping everywhere. You've only got a part a little bit in your garden, it goes haywire. There's a couple of ponds here. an ornamental pond. And this is as far as you could go up in this direction. I'll just show you this bit over here. So that there would have been the coach house in front of you. And there's shame all that's gone. All that history's just all fell down and got dilapidated and disappeared. But for the wildlife, there's a tawny owl box up there, a couple of bird boxes. And in there is like an ornamental pond in there. What a pleasant day. Have smelly vision. Those flowers smell absolutely amazing. And for a little place that's free to come and have a walk around, you can't go wrong. So there's always lots of bulk, lots of wildlife to be seen over here, lots of birds and that. And if you like your plants and trees like I do, there's plenty over here to come and see. Some huge yew trees. There's a big one now. It don't take you long to walk around here. I don't know. Hour. Uh,
area here is like a rockery. There's a little chair over there. But we've got like this little path here, like follow the yellow brick road, isn't it? Nice walk, that it. There's that building I was telling you about that they've Harris fenced off, and we're basically at the top now of the path we come in on from the from the car park. And look at that old tree over there. Look, that's insane. Wow, look at that. Beautiful. Oh yeah, another home out there. Another little garden, fence garden. So that bit there will take you back down to that hide that we took you down earlier on, the second hide. And then this path down past all the primroses and daffodils takes you to the end there. And that's back to the car park. So we're heading back to the car now, back to the car park. Got a couple of more places to go. I might as well take you with me, eh? So come and have a look. But I need some high protein snacks. Lost quite a bit of weight. I can get in the clothes now that I couldn't get in before I went away on holiday. So something's going right. But we're going to head off to Bazo Land, or Basildon as some people call it. Just wave goodbye to the people. And I'm going to head to a biltong shop. Oh, I've been going there for flipping donkey's years. It used to be in Canvey Island, this place. It's now in Basildon, but they've also opened one up in Chelmsford that my son goes to. But they do things in there called chilli snap sticks. And basically, it's thin strips of biltong, really dried out and it's flipping lovely. Cool. We go for it like a couple of flipping Spanish piranhas. But, so we're going to go there and another place that I've wanted to go, and I know it's open, and I'm gonna pop there afterwards. Right, here we are, back at the car park. Job done. Here we are, built on direct in Basildon. There it is. Lovely jubbly. Really nice in there. We used to go to the one in Canvey Island, but that's shut now. There's your opening times. So fresh built on and South African meats and all different sort of South African groceries. Let's have a look, eh? Of course, yeah. Well, I eat enough of your stuff, so it's only gonna be nice yeah. stuff. Right. We're in the shop. Look at this lot. Wow. There's all your little bags of drawverse. Drawverse is basically a dried sausage. Biltong, which is the slabs of meat, which is hanging up there. They dry it all here. It's really nice and you can buy it in weights. But I've just bought basically 100 quid's worth of snap sticks and they're flipping lovely. I'll show you when I go outside. They do all South African herbs, spices, all the stuff that you'd want if you was living in the UK to remind you of home, all your spices, uh, all stuff for your bray, which is barbecue to us, meats, 
Oh, your sausages, your steaks, look at that. Oh, Texan ramp steak. All your different pops. And your crisps that you like. They do grape Fanta in here. Oh my God, grape Fanta's flipping lovely. And there's frozen meats here, so you've got your Borwurst, which is your sausages, curly sausages. All different types of South African meat. Flatties, which is a spatchcock chicken. And braid packs and that, yeah. Loads of stuff. You can get your Dutch ovens from here as well, your poiki. All your cooking pots. Yeah. Happy days. And all the South African sweeties, look. Let's get a scoff some of them chili snapsticks. Mm. Thanks, darling. You're welcome. See, ya. See you later. Bye. Bye. Ah, there we go. Lovely, grubbly. So we're off next to another food place and then we go home because the dog's in on, indoors on his own. <laughs> Lovely chaplain. Come on, come on in. And that is what it looks like. So it's steak sliced really thinly and dried out on a rack in a dryer. Mm. Once you start eating it, and if you're on a carnivore diet, perfect. Absolutely perfect snack. The only problem is, once you start eating it, you just can't stop, can you? I'm addicted to it. <laughs> right, next place. <laughs> right. Stiffer Clay's Working Man's Club, or Social Club. King's Cockle Shed. Let's get some seafood. Mm, mission accomplished. Let's get home to the dog. Old Raven's been in on his own. The old internal cameras are going bing, 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 bing. He's been mooching around, so go and see how he is, eh? Let's get home and I'll show you what I've got. Mmm, mm, jelly deals. Oh, jelly deals. Yum, yum, yum. Been all around Scotland and Norfolk, you cannot go je get jelly deals for love nor money. I love jelly deals, so I'm gonna scoff at now, my mouth's watering. Anyway, just a little video while we're getting sorted out, went out for the day, I hope you enjoyed that. Please check if you're subscribed, if you're not subscribed, whack a subscribe for us and tickle my bell so you get the notifications. And leave a comment, I love reading your comments. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, I'll leave some a few photographs at the end, see if Sammy's got any close-up photography done, any macro photography, see what she took pictures of. And I'll catch you all on the next one. I'm going out next Tuesday with a mate of mine, and we should have a good day out then. We're going to have a lovely day out, go and see what birds we can see. All over the place, got a couple of places we're going to go to. So we're going to check that out. Anyway, I've got biltong and seafood to eat. Happy days! You stay safe, you stay sane, look after yourselves and each other, and I'll catch up with you again soon, eh? Love to you all, you take care, eh? Bye!